Australia is loaded with awesome four-wheel drive adventures, but the one I'm about to embark on is one of the most remote. I'm at the westerly most point of Australia. Well, almost. That is the westerly most point of Australia. It's a place called Dirk Hartog Island. It's in Shark Bay, midway up the West Australian coast, and is where the first recorded landing of Europeans on Australia occurred. Our ride for this adventure is a Jeep Trailhawk, a recent addition to the Grand Cherokee family, and one designed for people planning to use them off-road. It's got various additions to help it go further in the rough stuff, one of which is adjustable height air suspension, something that not only gives up to 274 millimetres of ground clearance, but also means bumpers are less likely to catch on anything, which is handy. On a map, this place looks tiny, but once you get onto it, you realise that it's actually a pretty big island, particularly north-south, um, pretty long and skinny. From one end of the island to the other, you're looking at about three hours. The vegetation on Dirk Hartog is pretty hardy stuff. You can tell that a lot of it's fairly sharp. It obviously doesn't want to be eaten by um, the goats and sheep that used to live here many years ago. There's almost no trees. I can't think of when we last saw a tree. There are plenty of shrubs and lots of greenery that's obviously pretty good at surviving on not much water and a lot of sand. So it creates a pretty unique landscape. It's pretty harsh, fairly barren, but absolutely spectacular. And the further you drive around this place, the more you just find these unbelievable pockets. For one of our first stops though, we're heading north to where the explorers landed hundreds of years ago. So this is it, Inscription Point. Um, it's the location of the first recorded landing of Europeans way back in 1616. Um, these days there's a plaque to commemorate it. It's not the real one, it's a replica, but it gives you a bit of a feel for the place. But really, this place is all about the scenery and the view. It is just incredible looking out there. There's all sorts of wildlife. We've seen dolphins, umpteen humpback whales. You could stand here all day and not get bored. It's that abundant marine life that is one of the standouts of this island, like Surf Point in the southwest. Now here's something you don't see every day. Reef sharks absolutely everywhere. And to get to places like this on the island, you need a four wheel drive. There aren't a whole lot of roads on the island and not all of them are marked on a map, but there's some awesome places to discover. A lot of the roads are fairly easy going, um, albeit with uh, quite a few corrugations, but every now and again, you come across a patch that's just a little bit more gnarly. So um, you do need something pretty serious. Um, this car I'm in, we've got a fairly tricky four wheel drive system. Uh, we've got a rear locking differential and the winner is adjustable height suspension. So if you dial it right up, you get some pretty serious ground clearance. Um, you've also got a pretty hardy three liter V6 turbo diesel. The throttle response does take some getting used to. It's not always perfect. Um, between a little bit of turbo lag and taking a while to respond to when you push your right foot, um, it can take just that fraction of a second to wind up. But once you get going, you got heaps of stonk and it is actually pretty refined as well. One thing you also have to be aware of is fuel use. It's 180 kilometres from the nearest servo, plus you have to get back there once you get off the island. The other really handy thing, a 93 litre fuel tank. So that's pretty big on a car this size. Um, it means you can easily pretty much explore anywhere around here and get back to the fuel stop, which is a couple of hundred k's away once you get off the island. So it's handy having that decent range. The Grand Cherokee isn't as big as some of the other off-roaders that you tend to see out here, Land Cruisers, Prados, uh, Mitsubishi Pajeros, those sorts of things. It's only a five-seater for starters, but for many people, that's gonna be enough. It wasn't long ago that Dirk Hartog Island was um, a leasehold. It was a pastoral land, so it was um, for sheep grazing and so on. Uh, around 2009 it was turned into a national park and since then um, a big part of the aim has been restoring this place to what it was like back in 1616, so back when Dirk Hartog and his team uh, first discovered it. Nowadays this island has no feral animals so there's been a massive project to get rid of um, all the things that aren't native so uh, the ultimate aim is to reintroduce the species that lived here hundreds of years ago um, and bring it back to uh, how it once was. Every now and again you spot something that's a, a reminder of the history of this place. Um, things like old shearing sheds or pens, um, some of the old equipment that was used there. There's uh, 
plenty of uh, plenty of old Dukartog Island still here. So there it is, Dukartog Island, one of the most amazing pockets of Australia, and and one of the ones that's least explored. They uh, they won't allow too many cars on this island, so around 20 or so is the limit. So you got to book well in advance to get here, but it is absolutely worth the effort.